in here screaming. Okay, hello everyone. Happy Wednesday, right? Wednesday? Yes. I think so. <laughs> it's Wednesday? Yeah, it's Wednesday. I am living in the clouds this week, okay? I am being tested in a way that I haven't been tested in what feels like years. But I was talking to my mom today. She's actually out here. She's in Colombia, also dealing with some health issues. And she's like, this is just showing you what you're capable of. Like, we're all going through this for a reason. And I was like, you know what? It's true. Like, when it rains, it pours. And I just want you guys to remember that everything that happens to you is really happening for you, to make you better, to make you stronger. And let's talk about distractions. You know, like, life is going to throw so many distractions your way. This week, I've had every distraction you can possibly think of. Some really scary ones, actually. But it's just about staying grounded, staying focused, especially if you're going for this rank. Okay, so today, Mariana and I will be talking to you guys about MMB, Managing Market Builder. Maybe some of you are very familiar with it. Maybe you're brand new and you don't know what it is. So we're here to break it down, to tell you all about it, and to tell you why it's so important. I kind of like to call it like the make it or break it rank. We're going to give you some tangibles and just make sure you really understand what you should be doing if you are trying to achieve this rank, okay? So MMB is the fourth rank in our compensation plan. We like to call it the first leadership rank because you have a very um, steady team at this point. But remember what I always tell you guys, you are a leader since day one. You must show up as a leader. You must act like a leader because that's how you are going to attract the people in your team. I don't know if someone unmuted themselves. Um, so to break it down for you, what do you need for MMB? Okay, and this is in your back office, but I'm just giving you guys a refresher. You need four active lines. Remember that these active lines have to be level one market partners. These are market partners that you recruit. They don't necessarily have to be recruited this month, okay? If you started the business last month and you had two girls and they become active, then you only need two more. Remember to become active, we need 200 personal volume points. Okay, so you need four active lines. What I would encourage you guys to do is to be an overachiever and try and get four active lines this month, four new market partners this month. Remember that any new market partners you get will go to your group volume and you're going to need group volume for this rank. So four active lines, you need 500 personal volume points. Remember we get personal volume PV from our sales that we purchase for ourselves and from our VIPs that place orders, from our new VIPs that sign up and from our retail customers. Okay, so personal volume is all about what you do yourself, your sales, your team's sales do not go to your PV. But remember, your PV also does go to your GV. You need two MMPs, two managing market partners. So out of your four girls or guys that you have on your team, out of your four active lines, two of those must hit the first rank. And then the big number is your group volume. You need 5,000. And I know that seems to scare some, but if you break it down, it's not that bad, okay? And I like to break it down so you understand it a little bit better. So if each MMP, they need to hit MMP, that's 1,200 each, because MMP is 1,200, right? So that's, what happened? Sorry. So that's 2,400, right? You have two MMPs, that's 2,400. Then you need your 500 personal volume because you needed to hit your rank. Let's add 500 to that. You're already at 2,900. If you are challenging yourself to get those four new active lines, and let's say they sign up with the cheapest product pack and you get 200 um, PV, that's 2468, that's plus 800. You're at 3,700, guys. You're almost there. And another challenge that I have for you girls and guys is try to get as many points yourself. Do not stop at the 500 PV. Do not stop at the four market partners. If you can keep going, keep going. So the best way to divide this is the way we divide every single rank. You're going to get your group volume and divide it by the amount of days in the month. Okay, um, let's, I always like to do it a little bit less to push myself. So this month has 30 days. Let's divide it by 28. So we're going to divide 5,000 by 28. You should be getting 179 points a day. Okay, so today is the six. 179 times six. If you are going for MMB, 
your group volume should be at 1,074. If you're not at 1,074, you are behind. And I know, one second, wait. I know it's like, it's only the six. I have so much time, but you don't. You don't because every day that we get behind, it's more catch up that we have to play at the end. So check your group volume when we get off this call and say, am I at 1,074? Am I ahead or am I behind? And maybe you're on this call, you're already MMB, but you're here because you wanna help someone get to MMB. Check their numbers, okay? MMB is not a rank that is going to fall on your lap. It is not a rank that you're going to hit by getting lucky. It is a rank that requires work, calculation, and teamwork. You need to work with those lines under you, okay? So this is where I go to my next point. You need to know who your two MMPs are going to be. This is not like Russian roulette. Let's see if any of my girls or guys want it bad enough. Let's see is not going to cut it, okay? So if you already have your market partners, whether it's two, three, four, five, whatever, you need to talk to them. First of all, all of your new market partners should be going for MMP. And if you're new, you should be going for MMP, obviously, if you're going for MMB. But have a talk with your market partners. Who is hitting MMP this month? Who wants it? Who is willing to work and sacrifice for it? Because those people that tell you, hey, Joe, I want it. I am going to commit to hitting MMP you're going to help me. I'm going to bother you. Now I know, okay, I can count on Joe. I can count on Mariana. Those are my two MPs. They told me they want it. They're going to work for it. I'm not blindly hoping that one of them is going to magically do it. Okay. So who are your two MPs going to be? These people, as I already told you, are going to be 2,400 of your volume. Okay. And they should be your, you guys should already have those two active lines, honestly, working by the six. If you don't have at least two active lines already, you are behind because remember those two active lines have to hit MMP. I want you to split your focus when you're going for MMB. I want you to split your focus with your MMPs and getting them there and your personal business. Because if both your MMPs do the bare minimum, you should be able to complete the rest to hit MMB if you want it bad enough. You need to make sure everyone understands what is the importance of hitting that first rank. Do you guys know that for you to get that um, MMP bonus, MMP, the first rank, you need to hit it within your enrollment month plus the next three months. So that gives urgency to our new market partners, okay? Talking about bonuses, let me go back to your bonuses. When you hit MMB, you will get a $500 bonus just for ranking up, but you will also get an $100 matching MMP bonus for your MMPs that hit within the time frame. So if both your MMPs hit within the time frame, that's 100 and 100 and 500 for you, that's $700 in just ranking up. That's not counting your VIP bonus acquisitions for the VIPs you get. That's not counting the bonuses for signing up market partners. That's not counting your commission downline bonus on the 15th. So automatically, if you hit MM MMB with two new MMPs, you can secure a $700 check bare minimum. Okay, that's money. In the time we're living today, that is money. Okay, have you broken up your rank for yourself and your and your MMPs? We have in the back office, wait, <coughs> sorry, in the back office, we have um, rank maps. It's a little nice drawing. And it's just filling in who is going to do what? Have you broken out? Have you broken that down for them and for yourself? Have you asked your team to see the conversations they are having with potentials? Have you checked your conversation with potentials? Have you shown your upline your conversation with potentials? Remember that it's not always, oh, this is the right way to do it. This is the wrong way to do it. There is no technically right or wrong way. But the reason why I like to ask for conversations is because if maybe you're not getting results, I can give you a different perspective or we can take the conversation a different way. But if you don't talk, your upline won't know. If you don't, if you, MPs, if you don't show your, your future MMB upline, they're not going to know. So are we sharing these potential conversations? Have you gone through your contact list? Are you working together? Okay. I remember when I was going for MMB, I was power hours, but in person, because we all lived here with my two MMPs every single day working together at home. Who are we calling? Who are we following up with? 
Maybe you can't do that in person. Maybe you have a full-time job, but can you power hour with them at least once a week? Maybe on a Saturday morning. Um, are you using the training, uh, Facebook group, the training calls? Are you getting on these calls? I know we send a lot of calls on the chat and it's a lot to keep up with. The best way to do it, guys, is as soon as you see a chat that you're a call that you're interested in, put it in your calendar. So like that you don't have to be, we don't, we don't have to be reminding you. And then incentives. I love incentives. I'm incentive driven and incentives does not have to mean a lot of money. Okay. You can incentivize one of your MMPs with going to coffee with you with a Monet hat. That's like, $27, I think, with maybe some extra product you have. Maybe your upline has extra product or money gear that they want to offer your MMP. I don't know. And this is not mandatory. I just, some people are driven by that. I love that. A $5 Starbucks gift card. Like, hey, I see you. I appreciate you. Here's for your hard work. It is not necessary, but if you can do it, why not? It also builds community. You work together. You get excited together. Okay. Most importantly, if you are the one going for MMB, if you want this first leadership rank, if you want that $500 bonus, are you leading the way? Okay. Are you showing your team what you would like for them to do? Are you showing your team what is possible? Maybe you're dreaming big and you want to go for MMB and you don't have a team quite yet. Maybe you only have two girls instead of four. Are you showing up for your future market partners? Remember, we attract how we show up. So are you posting every day? A closed mouth is a closed business. We don't have storefronts. Our storefront is Instagram, Facebook, whatever social media platform you use, and whatever we do in person. How, like, are we getting out and are we talking to people? Are you sharing your business and your products every single day? Guys, if I'm about to be four years in, and I still have people that I haven't reached out to. I'm still meeting new people every day. And I'm still sharing the opportunity and actively recruiting VIPs and market partners. All of you going for MMB still have people that you can reach out to. Okay. Are you hosting potential calls, whether it's by yourself or maybe still using your upline support or hosting potential calls for your downline? Are you going live on Instagram and sharing the opportunity? The thing with MMB the thing with MMB and why I like to call it like a make it or break it call is because I feel like to hit that rank, you have to do all the things. Give me a second. Luca. You have to do all the things that an SED has to do. You have to put in the work that an SED has to do. Close the door, baby, please. And that requires showing up and working your business every single day. I highly, highly encourage small events, wash parties, get with your friends in your house. You know, when we started, I know right now you guys see big events that we're doing and maybe it's a little bit intimidating. When we started, our events were two and three people in the backyard of a house, are at a Starbucks. We brought the oil and like three little samples and the excitement did the talking. The demonstration of the oil did the talking or the dry shampoo. It's not that serious. It's about getting out there. And I want you to remember that this is your job, not your upline's job. Even if your upline is going for a market mentor and she needs an MMB, it's still not her job to get you there. This is teamwork. And what I always say is I want to work with those who want it for themselves. You told me, Joe, I want to run to MMB. I'm going to run with you. And this is more than anything for my level ones, guys, because I am very busy. But, you know, if, if I don't hear from you, I'm not going to beg you because it's annoying we are here because we don't want to have a boss we don't want to have a manager you want to have a mentor and a leader that shows you the way and trains you and is there for you but not someone that's nagging you this rank is preparing you for that is preparing you to step into that leadership role that i do this for me role i want this for me role and that is why mmb is so important another Another thing I want you, give me one second. My dad was hungry. Um, go, Lucas is going to do it. Um, another thing with the MMB, when you hit, close the door, when you hit MMB, it's 
some people get so, um, I want to say cocky or excited that you hit that first leadership rank, that you got that big first bonus, that then you never re-rank it again. And that's again why I call it the make it or break it rank. Maybe that's the case with you. Maybe that's why you're on this call. You hit MMB once upon a time and you have never hit it again. Baby girl, it's okay. It's happened before. It's not the end of the world. It's time to rebuild and to do it again from scratch, okay? Be on top of those people that are going to help you get to your goal. Be on top of your upline that are going to help you get to your goal, okay? Um, uncomfortable conversations. This is something else I had written down here. When you're going for this type of rank, especially if you have not had um, success in the past and you've been trying for a while, that's when these uncomfortable conversations come in with your upline and with your downline. What needs to change? I love having these conversations because it's like auditing your business. What have you been doing that hasn't been working? And pay attention if you're one of those people that shows up every day and it's working hard and you're not getting those results, it's time for an uncomfortable conversation. What can we change? Okay, how can our content change? How can our conversations change? We must be open to constructive criticism. I love constructive criticism. As a leader, you need to be able to welcome and accept constructive criticism. If you're one of those people that you can't take, you know, like, hey, I suggest you do it this way or let's try that way, then maybe this is not the best business model for you because we are all about, you know, helping each other, making each other better. So make sure you're being honest. Make sure you're being honest with your downline. Make sure you're being honest with your upline. And lastly, are you obsessed? Okay, are you obsessed with this rank or would you just like to hit this rank? Okay, because when you're hungry and you're obsessed, you will make it happen. And if you give this energy to your team, they are going to adapt that energy. When I started this business, guys, I would literally, I couldn't sleep at night because I was so excited. I was checking my points like a freaking video game. Every hour, like refresh, refresh, what's moving, what's counting. And I still, listen, I re-rank, I do all the things and I still check my points at least three to four times a day because it's intriguing. It's like an addiction. Honestly, I remember I would always say it and Liz would laugh at me. I'm like, this is like, selling drugs, but legal. It's like addicted. It's at the point. What's next? I want more. And you're making all this money. So do you feel this way? Or is it like, yeah, I want to hit MMB. I would like to hit MMB. What does MMB mean to you? It's not just three letters. It's not just a $500 bonus. Okay. What is that $500 going to do for you, for your kids, for your husband, for your wife, for your parents, for your debt? for these hard times we're living in, for gas money. You need to put more like feelings to these ranks because that's going to make you work harder. For me, MMB and all my first way all the way to like SED was financial, financials. I needed money. I was in debt. I needed this for my family, for my security, for me to be able to breathe at night and not feel like being in debt to me was a terrible feeling. You know, I felt like I was suffocating at night. So what, why do you want this? Um, what else? We have no time to think about the haters, about the doubters, about the distractions that I was talking about at the beginning of this call, about our insecure insecurities or our fears. Okay, because the second we allow any of that to come into this space, you will not be hitting that rank. I promise. Because those distractions are loud, those fears are loud, the haters are loud. So you must be louder. And the way to be louder is to stay focused. And the way to stay focused is to have tunnel vision. Okay? Um, our obsessions become our possessions. And our distractions rub us away from our dreams. So what are you becoming obsessed with? That is what you're going to possess. Are you becoming obsessed with personal development? With growing? With growing your mindset? With growing a team? With helping others? Or are you becoming obsessed with paying attention to everything else that's going on? And an advice I have to you guys, and I know at the beginning, it's a little bit hard because a lot of us start this for money. Not everyone, but a lot of people start this for money. Don't view this as, as, as the money. Don't chase the money, okay? Ch chase the purpose, chase the fulfillment, chase bettering yourself, chase helping others. And I promise you the money will come. And the last question I want you guys to ask yourself is, are you committed? Are you committed to yourself? Are you committed to your rank? And are you committed to this business? What are you willing to sacrifice? And are you ready to embrace the suffering? 
I always say when people ask me to think back on my Monate journey, my best memories are my hard times. Those sacrifices, those times where we had to work together as a team late nights for, for people to hit ranks, like the easy come, you forget about the awards and the money. That's great. But those struggles is what makes you, what builds you. And those are the things you don't forget. In order to achieve something big, you need to get rid of the distractions. You have to be willing to suffer to some extent, sacrifice to some extent. And I know that sounds drastic, but I mean, sacrificing, you know, small things like instead of cooking dinner tonight, I ordered in because I don't have time. That's a sacrifice. It costs me a little bit more. Maybe it's not as healthy, but whatever. What, what are you willing to sacrifice? The brunch on the weekend, the Netflix show tonight. If you are not currently sacrificing something, you are not actively working to achieve a goal. Okay. Um, I think that is all I have for you guys. This is a very mental, uh, all ranks are mental, but this is a very mental rank. It requires a lot of thinking, planning, but most importantly, staying on top of it. Remember that the, one of the biggest reasons why we don't hit our goals is because we forget what we have to do. We lose track. The days go by and you forget your numbers, you forget what you're doing, and you just forget how to get there. So if you remember anything from this call, is if you really want to hit that rank, you need to have it planned out and you need to force yourself to look at that every single morning and every single night before going to sleep. Even if you're 2000 points behind and looking at that hurts you, you're like, oh my God, how am I going to do it? There's 10 days left and I only have 2000 points. It's possible. And Mariana can tell you, we've seen, we've seen amazing, crazy cases from the people that stay committed. But if you stop looking at that goal and that progress every single morning and every single night, you're going to lose focus. You're going to forget where you are and therefore you are not going to hit your rank. So I'm going to let Mari talk now. I'm okay for a couple more minutes, but I'll be in and out just in case. If you saw Jo throughout the whole call, she was also busy taking care of her kid and her brother, right? <laughs> Just like looking towards the side the whole time. And even though, even with those distractions, she's still an SED, she's still a million dollar club writer, she still makes time for her business. So we're not that different. All of us are on this call, we're really not that different. We're all living kind of same life with different stories, right? And what Joe just mentioned, what she finished with is that MMB is such a mental rank. Um, it's something that I've always said. MMP is more of a, if I work, I'll get it and I'll make it happen, right? Like I, if I sign up, I'll get a couple market partners, VIPs here and there. If I open my mouth, I'll hit MMP um, and that's great. Now to get to MMB, I don't know why. I think it's because you know, I was there too. So I was an MMP looking at 5,000 points, wondering how am I going to make this happen? I'm not capable. How am I going to sell $5,000 in hair care, skincare, wellness product when I have no idea what I, what I just signed myself up for? So MMB, when you look at it, is more of a mental thing. Because if you look higher than that, and you look at what MM requires, what, um, AED requires, what SED requires, those points keep going up. They go up to 30,000, they go up to 300,000, they go up to 800,000. But I don't mention this to scare you. I just mentioned this because MMB is the first mental block you're going to face in your business. When you look at those points and you are trying to figure out how you're going to make it happen, that's where the decision starts, where whether or not you're going to hit this rank or you're not going to hit this rank. So Joe touched on a lot of things that I was going to talk about, but I feel like we all really just do the same thing and we add our own, our own sauce to it. All of us came into this business with most of us zero experience and we just followed the way that had already been paved. So when I signed up, I was one of the first market partners that was joining Joe's, Joe and Veronica's team in the very beginning. And we were all just following the path of what they were telling us to do. They were telling us to get VIPs. They were telling us to get market partners. They were telling us to show up on social media. We were watching the trainings and we were doing as we were told. And that's why three, four years later, we've had the success. So if you're going for MMB this month, I think that the most important thing that you need to do is focus. 
if you are already posting, if you are already reaching out to people, if I ask you, are you reaching out? Are you following up? Are you connecting? And your answer is yes. My question to you is, are you doing it consistently and are you completely focused on making this happen? Because the time goes by so fast that it's already the 6th of April and I feel like the month started yesterday. You know, we blink and time flies. So when we are on a timeline of, okay, I have 30 days or 28 days, like Joe was counting earlier, um, I have 28 days to hit, to make these points happen. And if I sleep for a week, then I have three weeks instead. And if I still have no market partners and the pressure starts coming on more and more and more until it's the second week of the month and we didn't focus and we say, I'm going to do it next month. And we keep, we keep pushing it like this for a month, for two months, for three months. And the next thing we know, six months have passed and we're still waiting for the moment that we're going to hit MMB, but we haven't actually focused on making it happen. So good thing it's still just the 6th of April and all the time is flying. It's just the 6th. You still have time to set up all the goals that you need to have for this month in order for you to hit MMB. I think it's the best one for you to hit it because if you complete a bunch of blocks, you're going to get extra money and I'm all about extra money. So I think that MM MMB for April is the best time to do it. Although, you know, we're also starting a quarter. So I want to give you a little piece of advice if you're in this for the long run. If you're kind of testing this out, then the, the advice doesn't really go to you. But if your mentality is, I'm, mentality is, I'm here for the long run, this is a brand new quarter that we're in. If you're going for MMB, try to hit it this month and do everything that you can to hit it this month. But don't, but don't give up on MMB because you didn't hit it in April. Why don't you focus on bettering what you didn't do in April so that then you can go and hit it in May? And if you keep on that, on that mentality of, I'm just going to keep on getting better and better, then maybe in June, you'll actually make it happen. But you'll come with it, you'll come to this rank with experience, and you'll come to this rank with practice. Because this whole entire time, you weren't just focused on hitting this rank, but you're here for the long run, and you're here to just better yourself the, your whole entire time. Okay, so this quarter is all about what your performance is going to be watch yourself. Don't, don't blame your team. Don't blame your lack of recruitment. Don't blame your lack of VIPs. Don't blame your lack of experience. Stop putting the blame elsewhere and just analyze what your actions look like weekly without blaming yourself, without saying, oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm supposed to do this and then I'm not doing it. So I'm not meant for this. No, no blame. Just watch what your actions are, analyze. And then from there, you'll be able to start and you'll be able to organize your day to see what are the best times for you to work? When are the times that you're the most available? How many times are you talking to your, your front lines throughout the week? Um, are you active on your group chats? Are you jumping on the trainings? Do you know if your downlines are jumping on the trainings? It's all about watching the rhythm of your business. And if you learn your business, then it'll be that much easier to hit your rank with time. Just because you don't do it this month doesn't mean that you won't do it next month. Even though ideally I'm telling all of you that you can all hit MME this month if you wanted to. Um, so Joe has a really good training video on YouTube. I use it all the time. It's a little bit, I don't know if it's older, but I use it all the time. Beginning of the month, what to do when the month starts. I send it every single month because it's so simple. But there's no need to keep on making a new video each and every single month. It's already there. The things haven't changed. You all need to go look at your back office, look at your points, how many days do you have, what are the trainings are you going to jump on, get organized with these things. And then don't forget about your team. You're developing yourself as a leader, but you have to keep your team very present in your life. One of the biggest lessons that I learned when I was first growing in my business and I was growing a team and I had zero experience in leadership and I sucked as a leader. I'm sorry to all of you that joined me at the beginning and you're still here. I love you. Um, I wasn't available. I was recruiting people because I loved recruiting. I love what this business has to offer. And I was sharing this with everyone and I would sign them up and say, I promise I'm going to help you. 
but then they needed my help. And one, I didn't want to help them because I thought I was a horrible leader. So what help can I really give you? And two, I was busy. I was busy being distracted. I was, I was distracted with my friends. I was distracted with, um, I don't know, Instagram. I was distracted with the dinner. I was distracted with wanting to go to the beach on the boat, whatever. Distractions were taking over my life. And I was putting all of this energy into recruiting, but no one was growing because I wasn't helping anyone grow because I wasn't available for my team. The moment that I made it, that it came conscious to me where I realized, hey, you're recruiting, because I kept on asking myself, I'm recruiting, but why doesn't anyone rank up? Why is no one growing? Well, no one's growing because I'm not available for them. Until I become available for my team, that's when my team is going to grow. Because at the end of the day, they're still watching me. And if I can lead myself, I can lead them. If I can be consistent with myself, I will be consistent with my team. So all about this is that you just need to be so much more conscious of the team that you have going on, even if you're not the best leader. I'm not the best leader still. Joe's not the best leader still. Jacqueline Ortega's not the best leader still because we're all in the process of becoming better every single day. But if you're not willing to put yourself in the position to grow in your leadership journey, then when are you ever going to be that leader that is required of you to be an SCD? Never. But you have to put yourself in these situations where you're willing to grow and to develop yourself as a leader. And anything where you see yourself failing your team, don't blame yourself. Simply look at it as a place where you can grow and where you can improve and where you're going to do it better next time. Okay? It's not about taking your personal. It's all about growing. And as long as you have good communication with your downlines as well, they know that you're growing the same way that they're growing. And we're all here just watering each other and helping each other grow. Okay? So make yourself available for your team. Something that I do that I think works a lot for my team is I know we all, like all of us leaders have our builders and we have our builders group chat, but most, mostly for my builders group chat, I just rather people send screenshots. Um, I don't really like have them ask questions like they can ask on a bigger group chat where I have my whole entire team and the builders just send screenshots. I want to talk to this person. This is why I want to talk to her. These are the qualities that they have. This is why I want to reach out to them. Um, this is what I want to say to them. Okay, with that, I'm able to tweak and edit certain words here and there in order to help them send out these messages to the people that they want to reach out to. What we need to teach our teams the most is how to reach out and how to follow up. And the only way that we can help them to do that is if they're showing us live who they want to reach out to and how they're reaching out to them. Um, something that I was doing before that I feel like it helped or it took a little bit longer is that I will let them have these conversations and then I would say, send me screenshots of your conversations. So I would get a lot of murdered conversations where I'm like, okay, well, this is a great lesson. We have to move on to the next person or wait for some time to follow up again, which was fine. And they were still learning and I was still learning. But I noticed that if I had my own little group chat with my personal team and they were always sending screenshots on there live of who they want to talk to, of how they want to talk to them, um, of the things that they want to say, then I'm able to help them more hands on. I understand if maybe you don't have the experience, but you have to put yourself in a position to learn and to grow. And I can tell you that I learned the products. I, I learned the Charcuts and Conditioners of Monet after I had a team that was sending me quizzes and I needed to answer them for them. Because when I didn't have a team, I didn't care about really learning the products and how to recommend them because I had a group chat to send the, the, the answers to the quiz to and someone was always answering my questions and what to recommend. It wasn't until I had people coming to me asking me for help that I learned how to recommend products. It wasn't until I had people coming to me asking me about the compensation plan that I learned how our compensation plan worked. It wasn't until I had people coming to me on how to reach out, on, on, on hosting a three-way call with them, on hosting an event with them. It wasn't until then that I learned because the best way to learn is to teach. 
So why don't we just let the fear go, bring the recruit the recruitment in, grow your team and grow with them. And you ask for help throughout your whole entire process. You have help everywhere. That's like, that, that's a no brainer. You don't even have to worry about now having the help. You have to help. Even if your upline is not working the business, you can always go and ask for help in a group chat in corporate in trainings like these, jump in a power hour. You can always find help. Not having help is not an excuse because you have it here. We have provided you guys with so many resources for you to be equipped to get to SED and to get to MDC. Now, are you being intentional with what you're receiving and are you using the resources that we are giving you to actually make it happen? Time goes by way too fast. And if you sleep this month and if you sleep for one more week, it's going to be 10 times, 20 times harder for you to hit MMB this month. If you've slept for the first six days of April, you have the next 24 to run, to focus, to help your downlines, to take initiative with your team. They do what they see you doing. They're not going to do what you tell them to do. If you tell them that they need to post on their stories every single day, but you don't post on your stories at all, then if one, you're being a hypocrite, two, they're probably not going to do it because you're not leading by example. Your, your downlines joined you because they liked you, because they related to you one way or another. So if they're watching you, the best thing that you can do for them is to be the perfect example of what they should be doing. And if you're only working Oh, another thing that I want to say is treat this business like a job, not like a business, because you know, that's probably not what you want to hear. We're mostly coming from an employee mindset where we clock in at this time, we do our tasks, we do what our boss tells us to do, we go on lunch break, we come back, we do everything that we need to do because if we don't do it, we get fired. And then we clock out and we leave. And many times we put our lives and the important things on in our lives to the side because I need to complete this thing that my boss told me to do. And if I don't do this, then I'm probably going to get fired. And if I don't do this, then I'm not going to get the best shifts at work. And if I don't do this, then there is a consequence for it. But when you come into Monet, you have no, you have no one telling you what you need to do. You have no one telling you you need to check in or check, clock in or clock out. So sometimes you don't clock in at all because you treat this like a business. But business owners in reality, they're the first ones in and they're the, they're the last ones out. Real business owners, real people that truly want to grow their businesses, they're working 10 times harder than the employees. But since we don't have the business owner mindset, all I'm telling you to do is to show up to work. You just signed yourself up for a new part-time job. And what, you, what your quota is, or what your goal is in this new job that you have is that you need to hit MMB this month. Because if you don't hit MMB this month, you're now going to get a $1,500 bonus. And that $1,500 bonus, you need it because you need to pay off a credit card that you haven't been able to pay off for X amount of time. So you need to make this ring happen. If you don't do it, it's not gonna happen. And if it doesn't happen, then your boss is probably not going to like you and you're probably going to get fired soon. No one's going to fire you from Monet. But if that mindset helps you, then show up to work instead. Don't be so proud of being a business owner if you're not showing up for your business every single day. The sacrifices that Joe was talking about in the beginning, those sacrifices come. It, there's, but they're short-term sacrifices. It's three months, six months, men, I don't know, one year, two years. What is that compared for the rest of your life? But you have to set yourself up for success. And the mindset doesn't need to be just about hitting MMB and, and getting the MMB rank and getting the MMB recognition and the pin. It needs to be about you hitting MMB and staying at MMB. Because if you're not maintaining you need to work harder. It's not that you're not doing it right. It's not that you suck. It's none of that. It's just that you need to work harder. It's that simple. 
And there's going to be many times, hopefully not, in your business that you're going to rank to a certain rank and then you're not going to re-rank. But that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It simply means that you need a stronger, a stronger team, a stronger business, that you need to show up a little bit more, that you need to work some more. It's never, it's never about you're doing it wrong. It's always about how can I get better at this and what are the things that I can improve on? It's that simple. So as long as you're making yourself available with your team, as long as you're taking initiative with your team, as long as you're leading by example with them, as long as you're jumping on these trainings, not to, to not for your personal fulfillment of, I showed up to a training today, but instead you're jumping into a training to learn and to take note of what are the things that you're going to do right after you jump off that training. Because the majority of you jump on these trainings all of the time. I mean, I, I love the motivation too. I love these trainings because you like get out of this here feeling so pumped and you're like, yes, I got this. I, I'm going to get to SED. I love the motivation. It's cool. But you have, you have Spotify for that. You have YouTube for that. Here, you're coming into this. It's a place where you get direction. So then you can go and take action. You're learning. We take for granted the knowledge and the wisdom that we are receiving from these trainings every single day. There's so much wisdom and there's so much uh, knowledge being shared with us by so many incredible people that have found so much success in this business. And we hear them talk and talk and talk and talk every single day. And it's as if it's like we're spoiled brats and we don't realize what we have in front of us. Once those trainings disappear, once the leaders say, Facebook is full of trainings, go to Facebook, only come to me for a, tr a three-way call, that's when you're going to realize that you were being spoiled and you weren't realizing what you had in front of you in that moment. So please jump on these trainings, not to tell your ego that you showed up, but to consciously come on here to learn and then after to take action. We don't need you to jump on the four trainings that we have available every day. You just need to jump on one and take action from that one. You just need to jump on one, message your downlines and ask them, hey, did you jump on this training? It was so good. What did you learn from it? Oh, you didn't hear. Make sure you catch the recording. Next time you follow up with them, did you watch the training on how to get to MMB? What did you learn from it the most? Okay, let's take action on this and let's do it together. Why don't you come over to my house this weekend and we invite a couple friends over and we'll do a wine and wash. Or we'll do facials and mimosas. I don't know, action, action, action. The theory will always be there. But for you to hit MMB, you need to take action throughout the whole entire month. You got one week off, you can still hit MMB. But your focus and your intention needs to be there this whole entire time, not just for this month. Like I said, if you don't hit it this month, it's fine. Give yourself this quarter to prove to yourself that you can, to analyze the things that you need to get better at and to work on those things that you need to get better at in order for you to get to where you wanna to get to. Um, I don't think there's much that needs to be said other than do your daily IPS, IPAs, post on your stories, do your reach outs, do your follow ups, have new connections, say hello to the stranger that you meet in the street, wear your Monet gear, show up on the group chats. It's all the same basic stuff that we'll tell you every single day on every single call. Just do it and be mindful of your team. Be very mindful of your team. Because one, pe one person can come in and you can easily forget about it and it's and 10 days have passed and you haven't sent them a welcome, a welcome message, like a line two and a line three. Don't just focus on your line ones, focus on the people that your line ones are bringing in so that they know that they have support, not just in them, but also in you and that they have all of these resources available. Um, Joe, do you want to say anything else? I just, I want to add, you know, my, my 11 year old brother sitting next to me and Mateo really wants to say hi. And my brother goes, so are these motivational speeches? Mommy, Shh, I'm mommy, talking. When mommy said that when mommy said that when the, 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 your brother is, is baby, it, okay, is Mateo. babysitting to me. He's babysitting, yes. So kids don't lie, guys. If my 11 year old brother sees this a motivational speech, you guys should get some inspiration from it too. But what Mariana was saying is so true. 
you know, you show up for these calls and shout out to 14 of you that have your cameras on because he also asked me, are these calls mandatory? And I said, no, but the more you show up, the better you'll be. The closer you are to the fire, the, be- the more your, your flame is going to burn. I always say, turn on your camera. There's 115 of, there was 120 and there was only 14 with the camera on. Why? Show your face. When I started and I was the biggest introvert, I wanted everyone to know who I was because I knew you, my name was going to be known. On the group chats, on the team calls, with my camera on. We're not, guys, this is the first time I have a little bit of makeup on and it's because I was taking some pictures. We don't care what you look like. What we care is to see that you're engaged, that you're taking notes. Note takers are money makers. And more importantly, action takers okay so what are you going to apply after this call some quick tangibles to do every single day not only when you're going for mmb but for the rest of your money career number one personal development every single day whether it's a podcast whether it's a training video you need to be listening to something every single day number two Check in with your MMPs every single day. That's one thing I see different now than when I started. When I was actively going for ranks, I was texting those MMPs every day. What are you doing? What have you done today? How can I help you? Who have you talked to? So make sure you're doing that for your MMPs. Every single day, you should post about the business or the product, depending on what you specifically need. Follow-up Fridays is a real thing. Fridays is that you should be following up other days too but you should be following up every single friday that's when people get paid that's when they have money mateo you have an excuse to follow up and at least one power hour with your team a week okay other than this you know you guys got this i'm sure nothing we said today was new information to you all it's all about applying it and taking action and there's no excuse why there won't be at least at least 30 new mmbs this month out of the 120 that were on this call so Mari, thank you guys. Thank you for bearing with me and my distraction, but it's life. Um, let's get to work. The month is young. And that's all I have. Have a great night, guys. Bye.